The source is not always a leaf cell. The source could also be a, a root cell in certain circumstances. For example, in the post-winter season, when the leaf, uh, when the plant is regrowing from the died down root. For example, in herbaceous dicots, uh, that annuals that die down for, uh, to the root at the end of every growing season, they need to regrow from the root into a brand new uh, stem and leaf at the beginning of every growing season. So the plants will store sugars and amino acids in their roots during the growing season. And when the growing season resumes after winter ends, uh, they'll send from the root to these new sinks, assimilates, and the sink will then become new forming leaves. So a source is not always a leaf. A source is just the source of the assimilates. But in a typical plant, the assimilates are coming from somewhere. And that somewhere that it's coming from, that's the source. So where the assimilates come from, the source. And the leaf is typically where those assimilates are made, and that's where they're coming from, that's the source. So a storage organ, or a place where those assimilates are used, that will be the sink. Other examples of sinks can be buds, flowers, or fruits. Places where those assimilates are going to be used for new growth, or for the plant to uh, reproduce, or um, to form a, uh, an enticing meal for some animal. By the way, fruits, they're not for uh, the growing plant. They're actually for the animal that comes along and eats that plant and then poops out the seeds. The, uh, the fertilizer that the animal poops out along with the seed, that's for the seed. Now, a photosynthate is a sugar or other substance that is made by photosynthate. Um, anything that is an eight is formed by the process something or other eight. So a fixate is made by a process of fixation. A precipitate is made by the process of precipitation. So you can see the pattern here. Now, movement in the phloem is the process of translocation. We discussed that before. But that involves the movement of organic substances around the plant. That requires energy. It is an energy-intensive process to create a pressure differential. And that makes it an active process. However, it is not active transport. It is one step removed from active transport. Sucrose is loaded into the phloem at a source, usually our leaf. Um, so this is actually a process called active loading. Not active transport, active loading. Now there's a reason for this distinction. And the reason for that is because the process of actually moving the sugar across the membrane is a passive process. But the process of uh, making that happen does require energy uh, in making that gradient occur. So the gradient that allows sugar to cross the membrane is produced by a proton pump. That requires ATP. So hydrogen ions are pumped out of the companion cell using ATP creating a high concentration of hydrogen ions outside of the companion cell. Sucrose is loaded, moved into the companion cell by a specialized co-transporter that carries uh, hydrogen ion and a sucrose molecule into the uh, sucrose cell. So this co-transporter has to move sucrose against its concentration gradient in order to move hydrogen ions with its concentration gradient. So, Hydrogen ions have to be built up. Their, uh, their proton gradient must be so artificially steep that it must carry uh, uh, sucrose against its own concentration gradient. So the sucrose can diffuse down the concentration gradient into the, uh, 
after this uh, weird situation has occurred, sucrose will then be able to diffuse from the inside of the companion cell into the phloem sieve tube element down a normal concentration gradient uh, system from high inside the uh, companion cell to low inside the phloem sieve tube as per normal. This is a diagram of that. So this is the active loading system. We have hydrogen ion concentrations, which are low protons inside the companion cell, and the proton is being the protons are being pumped out using ATP uh, out of the companion cell here. This extraordinarily high concentration of protons uh, is a proton gradient that is uh, artificially high. This potential energy. Uh, allows sucrose to move against its concentration gradient from low to high passively with this co-transporter. And so uh, if it weren't for this co-transporter, sucrose would not be able to cross against its concentration gradient at all. Now that sucrose has this high concentration inside the companion cell, it is a high concentration, but sucrose is too large and too polar to cross back through the plasma membrane here, as we recall from unit two. So now that the sucrose is a high concentration gradient, uh, and the phloem sieve tube element will have a lower concentration gradient, it will diffuse by through the plasma desmata into the phloem sieve tube element. Now, what's water been doing all of this time? So, phloem's job. Phloem's job is to translocate soluble organic compounds. Now, the movement through the phloem. Phloem, uh, sucrose enters the sieve tube. That lowers the water potential, makes it more negative. So water moves in to the phloem by osmosis. That increases the hydrostatic pressure. That's fluid pushing against the walls at the source. Now, Sucrose is used by cells surrounding the phloem are, um, and are moved by active transport and diffusion from the sieve tube into the cells. That increases the water potential in the sieve tube. That makes it less, ne less negative. That means the water is going to move out by osmosis, which lowers hydrostatic pressure in the sink. So we basically have sucrose that is a high concentration at the source and sucrose at a low concentration at the sink. High sucrose in the source, low sucrose in the sink. High sucrose draws water in at the source. Low sucrose at the sink forces water out. High water increases the pressure at the source. Low water decreases the pressure at the sink. High water, high pressure, low water, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, water flows. So water is going to flow from the source to the sink. So water entering the phloem at the source moves down this hydrostatic pressure gradient and leaves the sink to produce a flow of water along the phloem that will carry the sucrose and other assimilates. This is mass flow. It can occur either up or down the plant at the same time in different phloem tissues. So it depends on what the source and the sink are. Now, effectively, because this is actual, actual physical water that is moving, anything dissolved in that water is going to be carried along with it. So water being carried in this phloem is going to carry any diffused substances along with it. Now, here are some uh, commentaries about the structure and function of xylem. All xylem is composed of cellulose impregnated with lignin. That will strengthen the walls, prevent the collapse, and provide structural support for the plant as a whole. Xylem is hollow and continuous. Uh, that allows for the passage of water. Smaller tracheids are present between the uh, larger vessel elements. That takes advantage of the availability of space. Um, perforated tracheid end walls in uh, stacked tracheid tubes. That allows for the passage of water between stacked tracheary elements. 
and the tracheate cells taper at both ends. This allows the tracheate elements to overlap at their ends. Larger vessel elements, um, the passage of, that allows for the passage of water. Older xylem deposited as tree rings will increase the structural integrity of the plant as a whole, um, even though they no longer serve for the passage of water, water as a whole. Now, in sieve tubes, there are perforated end walls of sieve elements uh, in individual sieve tube cells, and these allow for cytoplasmic connections between vertically stacked cells. These vertical stacks are the sieve tubes. Sieve elements have no nuclei. They only have a sparse collection of organelles. And they depend on their adjacent companion cells for many of their functions. These allow them to make room for the photosynthetic products to pass from one sieve element to another. Many plasmodesmata are shared between these sieve tube elements and their companion cells. These allow for companion cells to support the sieve tube elements directly. Now, Protein strands are not believed to be present in living, functioning flown tissue, and xylem diameter can be as large as 0.7 millimeters. Now, these are some things that I couldn't fit into other places in the uh, in other places in the uh, conversation in the rest of the videos. Now, this brings us to a close for Unit Four Plants. The next topic that we'll be discussing is going to be uh, Unit Four Transport Systems in Animals.